Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today, we have a story about a girl who loved dinosaurs. Ooh, I love a good dinosaur story. Well, this story isn't as much about the dinosaurs as it is about the girl and how she followed her dream to grow up and work with dinosaur bones all day long. Like as a paleontologist? Like a fossil fixer. And we're about to find out what that means. Miria Perez dreamed of working with dinosaur bones for as long as she could remember. I've always loved dinosaurs since I was a kid. My mom says, you know, at two years old, that was when I decided to be a paleontologist. Well, it's pretty common for kids to be obsessed with dinosaurs, but I don't think it's very common for people to know they want to be a paleontologist at two. Miria has never known life without an extreme love of dinosaurs. She celebrated with dinosaurs. Almost every birthday cake was a dinosaur theme or paleontology theme. She surrounded herself with dinosaurs. My room was just decorated with dinosaurs. I had dinosaur paintings on the wall. She drew dinosaurs. Um, I really was into art. So in my art classes in elementary school, I'd make you know whatever project it was that had to be linked to dinosaurs at some point. She even wore dinosaurs. Dinosaur dresses that my mom made for me since they didn't exist. There are pictures of me in a dinosaur costume with like a princess outfit on. So like it had to be dinosaur everything. Basically, Miria was living a full blown dinosaur life. I play dinosaurs outside. I would collect rocks and pretend that they were fossils. And I thought I was into dinosaurs when I was a kid, but this is like a whole other level. Miria was 100% committed. And her happy place was naturally the Natural History Museum where she lived in Houston, Texas. I remember going to the museum and I demanded that the dinosaurs and the paleontology hall be the first thing we go see. And then, of course, we had to go see them one more time before leaving the museum. Like, just in case one of the dinosaur skeletons had moved a little bit because it was actually still alive. (laughs) Mostly, Miria just loved being around dinosaurs. And when she was 12, she went to the museum for a very special event. I went to an event at the Houston Museum of Natural Science called Dino Days. And there they featured their curator, their paleontologist, Dr. Robert Bakker. Dr. Bakker was a world-famous paleontologist. He'd starred in documentaries about dinosaurs, which Miria had watched on TV. Of course she watched dinosaur documentaries. Dr. Bakker looked the part of an intrepid paleontologist. He had a long white beard and wore a big cowboy hat. He seemed larger than life. And Miria was going to meet him that day. I mean, the whole morning up to that point where I saw him, stomachs and knots, you know, shaking and very, very nervous. And I, you know, still get that way sometimes meeting idols. I mean, me too. Like, everyone feels that way when they meet their idols. If I ever meet Kermit the Frog. (laughs) Miria had something she wanted to show Dr. Bakker. I brought a binder full of my dinosaur drawings that I had done in my free time. Finally, she saw her moment to approach the great paleontologist. Miria gathered up her courage. I probably was shaking my binder at the time trying to show him and and impress him. Well, that's pretty brave. I know, but that wasn't Miria's last time to talk with Dr. Bakker that day. After lunch, there was a big event in the museum's auditorium. Dr. Bakker stood on stage with big sheets of paper in front of him, drawing extinct animals. It was like a game of dinosaur Pictionary. So if you could guess his drawing and tell him a little bit about the animal, you could keep the poster. Miria was chosen to go up and guess on stage. I thought I knew the dinosaur. Once again, she gathered up her courage in front of her idol. I got the answer wrong. Oh, no. So did she get sent back to her seat? No, she got to stay on stage with Dr. Bakker as he talked and finished the drawing. And eventually, she got the right answer. Even though I got it wrong, he showed me what was correct and led me to the right answer and got to keep the poster. And it's hanging up in my office right now. Well, that's awesome. What was the dinosaur? 
It was Gorgosaurus, a big predator and a cousin of T. rex. Cool. Before Dino Days was over, Miria had asked Dr. Bakker if she could come work at the museum. I asked, you know, how can I be involved? I really love paleontology. How do I get involved? And, you know, is there a possibility I can volunteer? So what did he say? He said yes. Miria could join the Junior Volunteers program at the museum. And when other kids were spending their weekends playing soccer or doing gymnastics, Miria did paleontology. It was amazing, honestly. You definitely put in the work. I spent almost every weekend I could. My poor mother driving me in through Houston traffic. She was a real trooper. I don't know how she did it for as long as she did. She was a museum mom, a member of the select group of parents whose kids need to be driven to museums every weekend. Miria loved every minute of it. That's when I decided... You know, this is this is home. I love being in a museum and people visiting. They want to hear all about the cool facts and the cool new discoveries that you get to be a part of when you volunteer and learn how to prep fossils and give tours. So Miria found her people. Yes. She also got to go on some amazing field trips outside the museum with Dr. Bakker. My fondest memories are going out to the Uh, Bread beds of Seymour, Texas, a little tiny town where there are plenty of Permian-aged fossils, 287 million-year-old bones of animals that lived before the dinosaurs. And during those times, Bakker would show me how to prep and how to excavate them. That's so cool. What a great opportunity. It's really special. But, you know, a lot of adults enjoy sharing their work and their knowledge with young people who want to do what they do. There's actually a name for them. They're called mentors. They see and and support you. At least that's what a good mentor does. They see your strengths and they have opportunities that they can show you and, and kind of guide you to where you need to be. So a mentor shows you the ropes in a helpful way. There's someone you can talk to about how to achieve your goals. Yes, Dr. Bakker was Miria's first mentor, but through her many years volunteering, she found many more like her personal paleontologist super friends. Exactly. And meeting all these people, she got to see all the different jobs she could have within paleontology. Uh, Within paleontology, there are a couple different routes you can go. There are different kinds of paleontologists. They study specific kinds of fossils. You have vertebrate paleontologists who study dinosaurs, uh, mammals, uh, reptiles, things with backbones. That's your classic paleontologist. And then you have inverts. Wait, what's that? Someone who turns the dinosaur bones upside down? (laughs) Inverts is short for invertebrates, animals without backbones like ancient squids, for example. Ancient squids are pretty cool. You also have ichnologists who study trace fossils like footprints. Wait, ichnologists? They study gross stuff? (laughs) No, they study fossils that aren't bones, including my favorite fossils, which might be a little bit icky, coprolites, fossilized poop. Definitely gross stuff. And then you also have paleobotanists who study plants. Ooh, flower fossils. That sounds awesome, too. So what kind of paleontology does Miria do? Well, Miria tried a little bit of everything between her time at the museum and studying paleontology in college. I just found I did enjoy learning and um, reading and and making discoveries, but I really, really loved working with my hands. She decided to become a fossil preparator. It's a fossil (laughs) preparator. (laughs) Preparator. Preparator. So what is that? A fossil preparator is a kind of paleontologist And our job is to prepare and clean fossil specimens so that they are ready to be put in our museum's collections for studies for generations down the line and then also on display. So they're the people who actually get to touch the fossils in a museum, not like the rest of us who get yelled at when we climb over the railing at the T-Rex exhibit at the Field Museum in Chicago. That was totally inappropriate, Marshall. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know anyone who did that. Fossil preparators are the fossil fixers of the paleontology world. It's their job to take a fossil that's just been dug out of the ground into an object worthy of display in a museum. 
There's um, an artistic component to fossil prep as well. You have to really learn the tools and you get a good eye for it. And I just, it's very therapeutic. Bones arrive to Miria's lab in all sorts of conditions. They might be completely covered in rock or just disintegrating into dust. She works on them with a set of tools ranging from mini jackhammers called air scribes to tiny brushes, Q-tips, and glue. It's kind of like coloring in a coloring book. You go through and you know what the bone looks like and you're really good with your tool. And so it just becomes kind of like a rhythm and you just jam out and you prep, you prep away. So fossil prep is like paleontology for artists who like to jam out with dino bones. I wonder what the best dino jams are. I think we need to get a dino playlist together. (laughs) Miria is now a fossil preparator at the Perot Museum in Dallas, Texas. It's her first real job, but she's already been doing paleontology for over 10 years. It's wild to be 24 and have a decade long experience of fossil prep, which is wild. It's pretty great. I definitely had kind of a jump start doing it so early. So Miria went from doing fossil drawings as a kid to becoming a fossil artist in real life. Exactly. And remember how when she was two, she wanted to be a paleontologist. But her experience showed her that there are many different ways to work in paleontology, and she found the way that was right for her. It definitely enforced that I wanted to do it, but it's very important to figure out what you like. So Miri should write a book called How I Turned My Dino Dreams into Dino Reality. I imagine it would be full of really excellent advice for anyone who has a dream job. But here's the big take home message. If you can explore and figure out what you like early, then that's awesome. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you have a dream job? Maybe there's a way to get started on it now. Here's two ideas to start exploring. The first one is to look for places in your area where people might do the work that you dream of doing. Then ask if there are volunteer programs or someone to talk to about opportunities to get involved, even from home. So here's the second idea. Google and reach out to people who have the job you dream about. Lots of people have websites with information about their work and how to contact them. Send them an email asking for advice. Maybe with the help of a grown-up. And speaking about scientists, they're usually happy to hear from kids. And if you want to be a paleontologist, Miria is happy to answer your emails personally. We'll have her email address on our website. Thanks today to Miria Perez, fossil preparator at the Perot Museum in Dallas, Texas. Miria is an If Then ambassador. If Then seeks to further advance women in science, technology, engineering, and math by empowering current innovators and inspiring the next generation of pioneers. This episode is made possible by an If Then grant. You can hear more from Miria about her journey to become a fossil artist on a special bonus interview episode available to Patreon supporters who pledge $1 or more a month. Just go to patreon.com slash tumblepodcast to sign up. And we have plenty of free resources to check out on the blog on our website, sciencepodcastforkids.com. Get Miria's email address, see photos of her working in the lab and her awesome dinosaur outfits. Plus, find out what her favorite paleontology YouTube channel is. Claire Glendenning is our intern. Sarah Lentz is our head of partnerships. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote and produced this show. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all of the original music for this episode. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more stories of science discovery.